Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech Talk.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with AMD, as the company have issued an official statement as to what's going on with the Ryzen 3000 series processors and the boost frequency. And according to AMD, it all comes down to a, quote, bug that has been discovered in the BIOS, and the company will be releasing an update update to the BIOS code which will aim to fix this very issue. The Ryzen 3000 series CPUs debuted almost two months ago now and when they launched people immediately started to praise the processors not just because of the insane pricing that AMD were asking for the CPUs but also the rather impressive amount of performance. A CPU such as the 3700 or the 3600 in my opinion anyway probably represented two of the most impressive in terms of the value but the one concern that people have had consistently regarding the processors is that the boost behavior of the processors has been somewhat inconsistent. AMD is pleased with the strong momentum of third generation AMD Ryzen processors in the PC enthusiast and gaming communities it began. We closely monitor community feedback on our products and understand that some third gen AMD Ryzen users are reporting boost clock speeds below the expected processor boost frequency. While the processor boost frequency is dependent on many variables including workload, system design and cooling solution, we have closely reviewed the feedback from our customers and identified an issue in our firmware that reduces the boost frequency in some situations. We are in the process of preparing a BIOS update for our motherboard partners that addresses that issue and includes additional boost performance optimizations. We will provide an update on September 10th to the community regarding the availability of this BIOS, end quote. So the last sentence is quite important because, well, it's not them promising the release of the BIOS on the 10th of September. Instead, they are promising an update when the BIOS will be launched. And obviously then it's down to motherboard partners to then update their respective motherboards so it might mean that we could be waiting still quite some time especially if you happen to own let's say an x370 or an x470 motherboard for example and your motherboard vendor doesn't necessarily think that that motherboard is a priority and they need to fix let's say the 500 series boards let's hope that's not the case though and we get it as quickly as possible and the timing of this statement and the 10th of September most likely aren't a coincidence because we all know that DeBauer released the video where he went through the results of his survey. Now, obviously, the survey at the end of the day is nowhere near uh, the, a large percent of Ryzen users. However, the numbers and the percent of people that were hitting the boost frequency in DeBauer's survey is definitely not a good look for AMD, like 6%, 5.6% to be precise, of 3900X users were hitting the clock frequency. I will grant you though, there is probably going to be some BIOS, a uh, bias, excuse me, of people who are filling in the survey who are not happy about a product. It's like the whole Amazon review thing, right? You're more likely to review a product if you're unhappy with it. So that's possibly one of the things that's been going on here. But even so, I don't think that the results are gonna be that far out from reality because even a number of reviewers and people I've spoken to who have been reviewing the 3700 and other CPUs have said that in many cases, their processors are not hitting the boost frequency of the reviewer guide for their processor, which is not good. So there are two ways you can take the timing of this statement. The first is that on the 10th of September, AMD had always planned to provide us an update of when a new BIOS to fix these issues you know, would be. Maybe that was always the plan. And therefore they've been working on this BIOS solution for some time. The other potential possibility is that's not what's happening at all. And instead, this has been kind of like chickens with their heads cut off running around at AMD because, well, the Bauer has basically brought this to the attention of many people. And obviously so many different uh, tech sites and YouTubers and so on have now been testing this and 
collaborating and basically figuring out, yeah, that's what's been happening with my processor. So AMD are looking to respond before this gets out of control because obviously it's negative PR. So therefore, it's possible that they're just going to be doing almost like a patch in the short term and using the older SMU 46.34 version. Hopefully, they don't and it is a massive fix. I personally think that the processors, the Ryzen 3000 CPUs, are an amazing product from AMD. And it is, um, I, I would go as far as to say, probably one of the more interesting tech products that have released over the past several years because of the sheer value. I know I've said this like umpteen and one times, but you have bought, let's say, a B350 motherboard, you plonk in a 3600, not even the X, just the 3600, and you've not even got a viable gaming CPU. You've got a very good gaming CPU, six cores, 12 threads, and it it's really impressive. The problem isn't that AMD's product is not good, it's that the BIOS situation and this comes to the communication with AMD with the BIOSes, the actual release of the BIOSes, particularly at launch, might I add, and so on and so on, has just not been to the standard that we'd hoped for. And I'll grant you that AMD are certainly not the only company that have had dicey products. Remember back when Intel launched the 7700K? And the CPUs in some cases were hitting like 90 degrees plus. And Intel's solution was, well, you can just not overclock it. That fixes the issue. So obviously that's not very good either. But this is kind of the opposite end of the scale. I'm really hoping AMD fixes this. Because if there are still issues after the BIOS update, I imagine a lot of people are going to be pretty upset. And that's putting it mildly. Um... I guess all we can do is wait and see. And others are saying, well, yeah, but the clock frequencies are not that far behind. You know, some people are only getting 50 megahertz less or what have you. And it is down to the setup as well. So some things I'm certain are user error. I'm certain some people are just, I don't know, not using thermal paste or something silly. Who knows? Uh, and that obviously is not the fault of AMD. Some people might be setting up the BIOS is wrong, what have you. But in general, I, I do think that there is something hinky with the BIOSes. And it's good that AMD are telling us that they've found these issues. But it's not really good that these CPUs got launched on the 7th of July. And, well, now we're in September. And, yeah, these BIOS issues are still kind of creeping up. I think that the release of the Ryzen 3000 CPUs may have been a bit fast. I think they may have probably been better to hold back on the release. But, obviously... They were targeting the uh, 7th of July for obvious reasons. Anyway, next piece of news. And this one actually is a good thing for AMD and, well, not so good for anyone else. Ever. If you're unfamiliar with the cause of all of this, Global Foundries actually filed 25 lawsuits in the United States and Germany. And this is against 20 different companies. And they are alleging patent infringement of 16 of its semiconductor devices. And this, of course, really is being levied at TSMC. And that's bad, and that's putting it extremely mildly, because defendants include Apple, Asus, Broadcom, Google, Cisco, Lenovo, MediaTek, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and Xlenix. That's a lot of different... Uh, lawsuits that's a lot of different companies that are being um that are being implicated and according to research analyst dan hutchinson who was speaking to the ee times this would quote prevent the industry recovering in 2020 furthermore in his estimation there's a greater than 50 percent chance of global foundries winning this that's according to his estimation Obviously, companies like TSMC and NVIDIA have extremely uh, good legal defense, so I imagine that we're going to be embroiled in a legal battle for quite some time. TSMC have gone on record and said that Global Foundry's allegations are, quote, baseless, and that we are disappointed to see a Foundry peer resort to meritless lawsuits instead of competing in the marketplace with technology. 
and we will fight vigorously using any and all options to protect our proprietary technology. So the only good thing from the perspective of uh, TSMC is that AMD actually were not mentioned in the lawsuit, which is kind of weird, but okay, which might help AMD in terms of obviously now they have uh, more fabrication time at TSMC. The other problem with all of this is that it could also impact NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, if you recall, a couple of months ago, confirmed that they would be using uh, Samsung for the production of its next generation GPUs. But, not only is NVIDIA being uh, sued in regards to TSMC, it's kind of a double whammy because the Japanese government are restricting chemical exports to South Korea. And this is going to impact SK Hynix, LG, as well as Samsung. And don't forget that some of the chemicals, which are vital for EUV production, well, those chemicals for EUV production is going to be used by Samsung for its 7nm node, which most likely was the node that NVIDIA were going to be utilizing for the manufacturing of its GPUs. I guess my point is it's going to be super interesting to see how all of this plays out. In fact, it might benefit in um, AMD as well as Intel, given they're releasing their cards next year as well. I don't necessarily think this lawsuit, however, from the perspective of users and users is going to be a good thing for the industry who knows what's going to happen to the pricing uh, so yeah let's cross our fingers that we don't get a, a really bad situation and the final piece of news for today is we may have found a lake field in 3d mark for those unfamiliar with Lakefield, it is indeed using intel's next generation cpu architecture known as Sunny Cove, but it's in a very different configuration to what you've seen in the past. Basically, you have one Sunny Cove core and four Atom Tremont cores. So this is basically a big little design, which we've seen in the past from ARM. The idea here is that you have a high performance processor core for uh, extremely taxing type of uh, applications, but you also have lower performance, low energy cores for when you're just doing some, you know, more basic task. Well-known leaker Tim Apisak has actually found a 3D Mark entry with a possible Lakefield processor. It is being identified as Intel Corporation Lakefield Low Power DDR4X T4 RVP, so it's certainly a very good hint it's Lakefield, but at the end of the day it could be misidentified. In terms of the processor itself, genuine Intel CPU 0000 at 2.5 gigahertz. It has a stock core clock of 3100 megahertz with a maximum turbo clock frequency of just 66 megahertz higher than that, so 3166. But the biggest giveaway here, other than the name, is the number of logical processors and, well, physical processors as well. You can see the number of cores which are being identified as five. And that would make a lot of sense given what even AM, uh, Intel's official marketing uh, literature has stated re regarding the layout of the core. I'm actually quite interested to see what the usage scenarios of this are. Uh, obviously, things such as tablets aren't quite as popular anymore, but I do think that two-in-ones could certainly benefit from a processor like this, uh, low-power devices, and yeah, it's going to be really cool. These chips are very energy efficient. Uh, the chips are available in two configurations from what I remember. The first is a 5-watt part, and there's also a 7-watt part as well. And naturally, since it is using Sunny Cove, they also will have a Generation 11 graphics solution on board as well. And it's one of the higher end configurations because it has up to 64 execution units. As for the release date of these processors, well, we don't have an exact release date. Uh, Intel have told us that we will have samples available at some point in the fourth quarter, but we don't know exact retail uh, availability. With any luck, you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, then drop a like on the video and get subscribed to the channel if you've not already. 
uh, so that helps us out a ton. You can also find links to our social media in the video description. But for now, I'm going to wish you a very good day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.